we're going to start looking at a new type of equation. And these are going to be equations where you get a product of factors that are equal to zero. I'll show you what I mean. Let's start with the basic idea. Imagine you've got two things that multiply together to give you zero. Can you tell me anything about A or B? Well, let's think of it. How do we get an answer of zero when we're multiplying? If we take like three and we try and multiply it by something and get the answer of zero, if you try any whole number, you're not going to get zero unless the thing you multiply three by is zero itself, right? So you just think of it, you know, even uh, three times two is six, right? You're getting a kind of solid number. Three times a third is going to be one. You're getting a solid number. The only way you're going to get zero is if you say three times zero. And this is what the core idea of what we're going to look at. So the what we're seeing here is if we've got two things multiplied together to give you zero. Here are the possibilities. You could have that the first thing is zero. And then you've got zero times something. Well, obviously, your answer will be zero. The other option is that the second thing is zero. Uh, so you'll have something times zero. Your answer is zero. And the other option is, of course, that they both are zero. Zero times zero is zero. So what we can say is if we've got two things multiplied together to give you zero, the thing that we know for absolute sure is that either a must be zero or b must be zero. And this is going to help us now in solving equations. Let me now move this into really nice looking equation form. So here we've got exactly the same scenario. Two things multiplied together to give you zero as an answer. Now as we've just seen, if you've got x plus 2, one thing, multiplied by x minus 1, another thing, to give you 0. What are the options? Well, either that must be a 0, or that must be a 0, or, of course, both of them must be a 0. So we can write that. Either x plus 2 must be 0, or x minus 1 must be 0. And if x plus 2 is 0, that's an easy equation to solve. x is minus 2. Or, if x minus 1 is 0, easy equation to solve, x is 1. And so we've now got a solution to that original equation. If x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 1 is 0, then we know that x is either minus 2 or it is 1. And just a further complication one can throw in to these sort of equations is you could have some kind of a constant multiplying the whole expression. That's not going to change anything because that's just standing outside there multiplying with the other things. You're still wanting to get an answer of zero. And the only way you can get an answer of zero is if that is zero. So you've got minus 5 times 0 times x minus 1. Or if that is 0, where you've got minus 5 times x plus 2 times 0, which gives you 0. Or if both of them are 0, minus 5 times 0 times 0 is 0. You can't do anything with the minus 5 because that's a constant, right? It's not, it doesn't have a variable, so you can't make it change. It just stays minus 5 the whole time. So again... This is no different to the last one. The only way that you can get this equation being 0 is if x plus 2 is 0 or if x minus 1 is 0, which will then give you x is minus 2 or x is 1.